Well, it's weekend once again. Everything in this greenhouse is looking really well, but we've had a slight change in weather today. After a week of rain and overcast, today the temperature's gone up by quite a few degrees and it's been very sunny all day. All these plants here now started to dry out all at the same time, so I've had to just go around, give everything a quick water, so as not to get caught out by these constant changes in temperature. And tomorrow it's going to be about 60 degrees, so from 42, only a couple of days ago, that's quite a big shift. So you've got to keep your eye on your plants, make sure they've got enough water, because at this stage of year, you don't want to be losing anything. I've also popped into the shed, grabbed a couple of these homegrown onions, because on cooking channel today, we're making a chilli con carne, and that's the beauty of growing all your own vegetables throughout year. Through autumn and winter, you've always got a supply of essentials. If you recall a previous video, we had these Savoy cabbages in these pots and they were getting attacked by slugs. Basically, most of the leaves were getting eaten. We just took an old pot bottle, popped it over the top of that, just to keep those slugs at bay. And I think that's worked out really well for us. We've got some really nice, healthy little plants now. Red cabbages and cauliflowers that we popped into these larger trays to help them grow on a little bit quicker and they're doing really well. There's no damage to them whatsoever, but we are getting some quite big red cabbage plants. And at the moment we've got Chinese cabbage in containers that's doing really well. We've got a cauliflower in a bigger container also looking really healthy. So I think we might as well have a container red cabbage as well because that's going to be particularly useful to me because I'll use it to make coleslaw for a cooking channel and we can mix it up with regular cabbage as well and a bit of onion and we're all set. Rather than let these plants get too big we'll move on one red cabbage into a container where it can actually stay until we decide to harvest it. I'm not going to get a really big one, but if I can get a compact, small one, then that's perfect for this time of year. Which is what I'm trying to do with all the brassicas that I've actually got in containers. I'll move my onions. And we'll get a container sorted out for one of these red cabbage plants. I also noticed this in garden as well. This is one of those hot lemon drop chilli plants and we had it in greenhouse in this pot. It's basically been in here all through spring and summer and we have had a lot of peppers off it. But it started to get a little bit tired and it was starting to get a bit cold as well. And as you know, chilli peppers or bell peppers don't like the cold weather. So I basically just put it outside greenhouse and we just left it. So I had no attention whatsoever. And it's got a little bit of fresh growth come. But the main thing is, it's decided to grow a new pepper. And on the top, there's another one just starting. Which is pretty amazing for the time of year. So, I've brought it back in for a bit see how it gets on and what I'll probably do is cut back a lot of that foliage so it can put all its energy into any new growth that it's got. Back to these red cabbages and I've got this container out at garden. It's quite a good size, really big holes in the bottom of it as well so really good drainage and I think that's going to be plenty big enough for what we're trying to do which is grow smaller versions of all these plants. We're not looking for big heads of cauliflower or cabbage. And as always, this has been part filled with a bit rougher compost. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this one out. It's the biggest one that we can see. You can see that's a really nice looking red cabbage plant. Some nice roots coming on bottom. So we'll move this one on today. And we'll get round to the rest of these quite soon. I 
And now this container has been part filled, I'm going to put some fish blood and bone in it. So I know that there's loads of nutrition in this container. Well, I'll just give that a bit of a mix in. And then I'm going to fill it back up with some more compost. Just give it a bang to settle it down. And I'm not going to fill it right to the top either. And we know that brassicas prefer a more compacted media. So we're going to get that pressed down as well. The other thing about growing your brassicas at this time of year is that you don't necessarily have to wait for them to form ahead. You could just harvest the leaves as they grow. So I'll just make a hole quite deep and we'll get this plant in. And you'll have heard me say this more than once, but when your brassicas grow through autumn, sometimes the plants can get quite long on this stem. So the best way to do this is to disregard these leaves here. Just take them off. They're the first leaves that came out, so the plant doesn't really need them. And then we can take this one off as well. They've done their job now. And that's just going to leave us this. So now we can plant it right down to there and take this long stem away and that bend out at the same time. And we're going to end up with a lot better plant. So if I drop that in there and I've pushed it right down and then fill back around it, straightening it as I go, you can see we've took all that stretch out of that plant. And that plant's a lot more stable now. And it's gone straight into a container that's full of nutrients so it can start feeding and growing quicker. And apart from making this a more stockier, stable plant, you may notice that I've left quite a gap. I've not completely filled this container. Because in autumn, we're gonna get overcast days more often than not. So if your plants start to stretch more after being potted on, because they're lacking the amount of light that they need, you've then got an option to bury it a bit deeper as it grows. So it prevents it from getting too tall and then falling to one side as it's growing. So that's the reason I've done that. But knowing there's plenty of room in this container for all that root system. And we know we are gonna start and get a lot of colder and more overcast days as we get closer to Christmas. So doing it like that is gonna help us out later on. And just as an extra deterrent, I've got some pieces of wood chip, which is quite rough. So I'm going to put wood chip around this plant, just in case a couple of slugs take a fancy to it. We did this in the greenhouse around some cabbages and cauliflowers. And since we did that, nothing's got eaten. So it's worth just giving it a bit or extra protection for the sake of a couple of minutes. Because anything that makes those slugs and snails uncomfortable is good for us. And that says container, red cabbage, all set up. Plenty of soil in there to keep it growing. Plenty of feed. Now all we need to do is wait and see what we get. And as for the rest of those plants that we've got left, which is another three red cabbages and another three cauliflowers, we've got some space outside in Greenhouse where we recently put in some Chinese cabbage, which unfortunately has took a bit of an hammering from slugs and snails, but they are still trying to grow. But there's plenty of room in there to accommodate those so we can have some in containers and some outside. And then we've got two chances or an harvest before next spring. Be interested in seeing what else we're putting containers between now and Christmas and how the rest of these plants are actually getting on 
as these temperatures start to drop then please just hit that subscribe button press the notifications bell and we'll see you on the next one now nah, i've got to go make a chili con carne enjoy your weekend